Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome to another episode of Top of the Key, presented by TurtleShow.com. My name is Mike Floyd, and in this show, we talk about everything NBA-related from the players, trade rumors, the games that I was having to watch, and anything that happens in the NBA. I might even talk about, you know, inside the NBA where Kenny and Shaq are roasting Chuck. So. And today, I, I want to talk about a bunch of rumors and stuff. I normally write about these in my blog when I was doing the Top of the Key in the blog format. So I figured, and like I said last time, I got video cameras, I got the equipment. I might as well just say it on camera. I mean, writing it all out gets kind of tiring after a while. So the first, you know, trade that's going on or attempted trade is the one for Eric Bledsoe. If you didn't know, Eric Bledsoe is a point guard for the Phoenix Suns, and the Phoenix Suns are pretty sorry right now. They're one in four, one in three. Uh, he tweeted out last Sunday that he didn't want to be there after they had just lost again, and. You know, people were automatically assuming that he was tweeting out, hey, he doesn't want to be with the Phoenix Suns. I mean, who would want to be with the Phoenix Suns after they went 0-3? They made Lonzo Ball look good. So not only did Earl Watson, the coach, head coach get fired, the GM of the team decided to start shopping around Eric Bledsoe. Well, Eric Bledsoe claimed that, hey, that tweet wasn't mean about the team. It was because I was in a hair salon with my girl and I just didn't want to be there. I personally, I've been there before. I've been places where I didn't want to be at and I've pretty much shoulder on my face like hey i don't want to be here maybe the timing was wrong with it but he did request a trade back in the summer which was denied so i was looking up some uh stuff on it some possible places he can go and i found this um cbs article i'll link it in the show notes uh possible places where he can possibly go and they're assuming places like indiana pacers they're talking about if they can get thaddeus young a 2018 pick i doubt that's going to happen uh, Denver Nuggets, they're talking about sending Eric Bledsoe, getting Kenneth Reed and Emmanuel Mude. Uh, I, I don't know about that. I mean, the Denver does need a point guard. They're talking about my favorite team, the New York Knicks. Um, they're talking about sending an Ian's Cantor, a 2018 first round pick, and a Chicago's 28th second rounder. Eh, I doubt that's going to happen. I mean, the, Christoph Porzingis is the man in that town. They already signed Tim, signed Tim Hardaway Jr. To another contract even though we drafted him let him go and then brought him back so i doubt that's going to happen milwaukee bucks talking about releasing javari parker and matthew Deladova. no because they don't need another big name everything goes through giannis uh he's essentially the gigantic point guard out there on that team so that's not going to happen la clippers i can actually see this one happening he started his career with the clippers they're talking about possibly sending Austin Rivers, Lou Williams, and Sam Decker in a second round pick. I don't think they're going to send that much for this dude. I mean, he has he has a history of being injured. Uh, DeAndre Jordan wants him home. I think that Doc Rivers, I don't think he would want to trade his son, but since he's no longer the GM of the team, he relinquished those duties. I think they can make that trade. I mean, they can use him as a point guard and allow Blake Griffin to do what Blake Griffin does. The offense is still going to go through Blake Griffin, but I think that'll be a good fit for him. Uh, the Charlotte Hornets. Uh, they're talking about sending Eric Bledsoe to Charlotte and then receiving Dwight Howard in exchange. I kind of like that trade. I mean, yeah, you have Dwight Howard, who's a defensive player. I mean, the Suns need defense. They've they been getting points just ran up on. It's perfectly evident in that Trailblazer game. They lost by 40-something points. So I can see that. I mean, Kimball Walker and Drew, Eric, Eric Bledsoe on the same team, that could be a crazy, crazy combination. Uh, he has played well next to other point guards before, but I mean, you know, it is what it is. Uh, they can also do a combo trade where they send Tyson Chandler and Eric Bledsoe to the to the Hornets, and they'll get Michael Kidd, Kilgris, and Marvin Williams. Mm, I don't know. Detroit Pistons? <laughs> Detroit needs all the help they can get. They can't win for nothing. Andre Drummond's their best player on that team. I mean, he just got... Uh, what's his name? Joel Embiid was talking trash about his defense. <laughs> they need more help. So there's, they're talking about sending Reggie Jackson for Eric, Eric Bledsoe, but it's whatever. Uh, New Orleans Pelicans. I'm actually recording this while watching the Pelicans play the Trailblazers right now. And Anthony Davis just went down. So <laughs> they have Drew, Drew Holiday out there. He's, he's good and all. But they're talking about sending Eric Bledsoe to the Pelicans. And the Suns will receive Omar Asik. A one more, a 2019 top 20 protected first round pick. Uh, the Cavaliers, the Cavaliers are always trying to add somebody. They need a point guard because one, Derrick Rose is hurt. Two, Dwayne Wade just went back to the bench and allowing J.R. Smith to play off the bench. And three, LeBron James was playing point guard today when they're playing the Bulls. 
and that was really weird. They had LeBron James, because I'm actually recording this on uh, on Tuesday and releasing this on Wednesday. So on the 24th, the, the Cats play the Bulls. You had the starting lineup, if I remember correctly, was LeBron James, Tristan Thompson, Kevin Love, um, Crawford, and J.R. Smith. And LeBron playing the point. I mean, the offense does go through LeBron. He is a facilitator, but it was just weird having him as a like a point guard. It just didn't seem right. So that was the the last uh, little p- possible trade. Talking about sending Amon Shumper, Channing Fry, and the Cavaliers' 2021 first round pick, the top 15 protected. I mean, I could see possibly LeBron pulling some strings. I mean, the Cavs are essentially his team. Uh, Eric Bledsoe is signed to Clutch Sports, which is LeBron's agency. He is a friend of LeBron James. So I can see them getting a little insurance, a point guard who's known to play pretty good and that can probably mold pretty quickly into, you know, the system, the system that LeBron has instituted in Cleveland. So the second one little topic I want to talk about is uh, Steph Curry and Kyrie Irving. So both of these superstars, they got fined over the weekend for ridiculous stuff. Uh, Steph Curry, he got fined uh, $50,000 for throwing a mouthpiece in the direction of a ref. He says he wasn't thrown at the ref. He says he has better aim than that. I'm gonna link the video and I'll possibly try to put the video right here if I can uh, find another copy of it. But uh, he he had got fouled. It was, what, 40 seconds left in the game? He went up for a, a layup, got a hard foul. Ref didn't call it. Threw the mouthpiece at the ref, got ejected. Kevin Durant got ejected as well. Uh, Kyrie Irving, on the other hand, they were leaving. I want to say they were playing the Pistons, if I remember correctly. I, don't quote me on that. But they were leaving the arena, and it was either the Pistons or the 76ers. It might have been the 76ers. I will have to check on that for you guys. But he was walking out the arena, and you know, in the little tunnel. So the, you know, the fans are over over the tunnel, and one of the guys was yelling out like, "Hey, Kyrie, where's LeBron?" Kyrie was like, "Hey, suck my, you know, you know what." Well, he got fined on $25,000 for that one. Me personally, I think the players should be able to, in Kyrie's case, react back to these fans. I mean, yeah, the fans pay the money, you know, to come see the players play, but you just can't sit there and harass the, the players. They're, they're humans and not expect anybody to say anything back. That's just like me going to your job and just heckling you all day long. Like, like say you're working at a uh, bookstore and I'm just heckling you all day long. I mean, you're going to get upset eventually. I understand that these guys are supposed to be professionals, you know, they're supposed to be held to a higher standard, but it gets to a point, I mean, it's getting kind of old. I mean, Kyrie wanted to do his own thing, lead his own team. He's doing a pretty good job about it. I mean, they've been on a pretty good, nice little win streak lately. So I think it's, it's time for people to give that up now. The Steph Curry thing, this is the second time he's been uh, fined for throwing the mouthpiece. The first time he threw it, he hit a fan in the face. I think he might have got ejected for that one too, but... <laughs> It was, it was kind of childish. They were losing to the Memphis Grizzlies. For, they were on like a losing streak. They finally snapped it against the Dallas Mavericks the other night. But it's I more expect that from like a Draymond Green or something. But it's whatever. Uh, the reason why I bring this up because watching you know a lot of these uh, sports shows on TV, they're talking trash, talking about like how the Warriors are the most hated team, and you know uh, Steph Curry should have been you know suspended for like five or six games for them. But like, it's a mouthpiece. He got fined $50,000 for an expensive mouthpiece. Like, come on, dude. Like, what more do you want from the guy? I mean, he, th- he threw a mouthpiece. He didn't hit anybody. He was frustrated. He didn't hit anybody. He didn't, like, run on the field like Marshawn Lynch did during the, uh, the Raiders game and actually grab a ref. He didn't even hit the ref. I mean, it is what it is. He apologized for it and kept it moving. Kyrie, you know, he said, hey, I'm supposed to help myself to hire Santa, but I stand by what I said. It is what it is. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is uh, Lonzo. You know, everybody's always talking about Alonzo Ball, LeVar Ball, you know, his dad being out there getting press conferences right after the games, you know, still talking trash. Um, I'm really interested to see them. They're playing the Wizards tonight, so it's, it's coming out on Wednesday. They're going to be playing the Wizards, and he's going to play, you know, John Wall on them. John Wall's known as a uh, really, you know, go get on cap point guard. You know, he play, he'll play defense on you. He'll stand up with the best of them. And, you know, LeVar was talking his trash, talking about, like, the, you know, the Lakers aren't going to lose again. And that, you know, John Wall and them better come prepared. And, you know, Mark, Martin uh, George on the uh, Wizards was like, hey, you know, John Wall's about to eat this kid alive. You know, the Lakers took it a certain type of way. They're young crew. They're like, hey, you know, going to talk about our point guard like that? That's our boy. And so, 
I like this. I think it's, you know, pushing Lonzo Ball is going to make his progression a lot faster. And it's going to make him, you know, a better player in the long run. So I pulled up some stats on Lonzo Ball you know, so far. So, so far, he's only played three games. He's played 34.4 minutes on average. And he averages 13.3 points. And his biggest thing is his assists. So, I mean, he's averaging 8.7 assists per game. I did notice when the Lakers were playing the Pelicans that it seemed like they were trying to force him the ball. Because if I remember correctly, he had... He, he almost got a triple double in that game. So I want to say he had at least close to 14 assists in that game. It just seemed like they were forcing the ball to him and it was just getting turned over. And automatically, you know, the defense already knows, hey, they want Lonzo Ball to, they want the offense to run through Lonzo. And they're going to force the ball every single time and it's going to force the defense to shift. Luckily, you know, Brandon Ingram and Larry Nash Jr., they were, you know, dropping shots they were balling out. I, I like this, but I also think that the second team that they ran in the third quarter that actually brought them from that deficit that they had for a while, uh, the one that had Cal Kuzma, Brandon Egram, Larry Nash Jr., Julius Randle, and forgive me, I can't think of the other man's name, but that, that to me, that, that lineup is the one they should start off with for a while till Lonzo gets more comfortable. But then again, I'm a huge proponent of throwing guys to the fire and letting them just build their game up and just getting more doing their own thing and i think this kid is like he's slowly getting more and more comfortable with the you know grown men you know gunning for him because of his dad i mean you might love him or hate him you know this dad i think he's he talks a lot but it is what it is i mean he's doing what he thinks is best for his son and he's not really hurting anybody honestly. uh speaking of rookies so ben simmons he uh he scored 21 points 12 rebounds and uh, 10 assists across 34 minutes you know, this takes a lot of pressure off of Joel Embiid. He's like showing that he doesn't have to do everything. I did notice in the first, you know, two games that it seemed like Joel was trying to take over the game. You know, he has been injured for so long and people were, you know, talking trash about him not really playing. I think he only played 32 games in the past three seasons. So, you know, he's on restrictions. You know, he can't play back-to-back -back games. So having Jason Tatum, not Jason Tatum, I'm sorry, Ben Simmons, you know, starting to blossom into his own, you know, being the rookie, like the phenom that everybody's saying he's supposed to be, this is going to be great. There's already talks about him winning, you know, winning Rookie of the Year. I mean, it's only, what, the second week? But they're already talking about that. But it'll be, it'll be pretty interesting to see. The rookie that I'm watching out for is uh, Jason Tatum for the Boston Celtics. Now, with Gordon Hayward being out and Kyrie having to take over that team, he needs some help out there, you know, with the Celtics. And so I see a lot of the guys are starting to step up for him. And he doesn't have to really do as much as he used to. So today, the Celtics play the New York Knicks. I mean, they beat them 110-89 to in Boston. I mean, it is the Knicks. Can't win a game. You know, we're on three right now. But Boston's 2-2. Two two. They're 500 right now. So Jason Tatum, I mean, he played uh, 31 minutes in his last game against the Knicks. He scored 22 points, two blocks, four steals, and two assists. And then Kyrie Irving, on the hand, had 20 points, uh, one steal, and seven assists. So it's, it's taking some of that pressure off of Kyrie. Kyrie's not having to do everything himself like he had to do in that not in the, the game against Cleveland, but uh, it was their second game. But also Jalen Brown. Jalen Brown is stepping up a lot. Dropping 23 points, uh, 4 rebounds, 4 defensive rebounds, uh, 0 assists, but these get these young guys are starting to you know slowly pick themselves up and starting to play pretty good. I mean, they still don't have Marcus Smart yet. Al Horford, he's out there you know, getting the rebounds, 13 rebounds, 11, 11 defensive rebounds. So this team is slowly starting to melt together. Uh, their next game is going to be against the uh, the Milwaukee Bucks, and I, they had just lost to the Milwaukee Bucks. Giannis had went for another you know plus thirty game. You know he's gunning for his MVP. So they're playing in Milwaukee. So I think that this team that they're going to play now, the the the, the Celtics team is going to show up in Milwaukee is going to be a lot different than the one that just showed up a couple days ago. Now that these young guys are starting to slowly get more comfortable, slowly starting to drop their shots, and their defense assignments are getting way better. I noticed one thing that Kyrie always got digged on, that he never really played defense until the playoffs. He played awesome defense against Steph Curry, but he stepped up his defensive game because, you know, all eyes on him. Uh, the last thing that I want to talk about is Andrew Wiggins. Now, as you can see, I got Cat, you know, along with Dame Lillard on here today. I don't have an Andrew Wiggins, you know, McFarlane toy. I mean, if anybody wants to hook me up, as you see, I got my Lakers, got to represent the Kobe. So Andrew Wiggins, you know, he hit an absolute dagger. 
ice cold, you know, they're talking about ice water in his veins. Absolute dagger at the end of the game, I think it was like four seconds left to steal the game away from Oklahoma City Thunder. So the game had came down to the wire. Carmelo Anthony had just hit a just a bomb three-pointer off the, the left-hand side of the court. And everybody thought, game winner. You know, it was going to be 113. I think it was like 112 or something like that. So the refs, not the refs, but the announcers are all talking about like, you know, the Timberwolves don't have a, a, a timeout. They don't have a foul to give, you know. They, they got to do something. Everybody had already ran down to the other side of court except for Russell Westbrook and Steven Adams. You know, they already knew what was going on. They played against guys like the Golden State Warriors, Houston Rockets, who are known to, you know, pull some guys out of the hat. So the ball got inbounded. Andrew Wiggins picked it up. The NBA came back and said that Cat had threw an illegal screen on Paul George. And when Andrew Wiggins went by, he crossed that half court, threw the ball up, buzzer went off, shot dropped. Crowd was just like, they were already like cheering and they just went, oh. You know, dagger, 115, 113. So it, it took everything in them just to get that, you know, all the way down to the end. I mean, Oklahoma had plenty of shot times to actually seal this game away. There was crucial uh, free throws just completely missed. But I, this Minnesota team, they're two and one right now. I want to say they're in the top five of their division right now. Because if I remember correctly, at the time I looked at this, it was going to be uh, Washington, Cleveland, Milwaukee, Toronto, and uh, uh, Brooklyn. And then um, for the West, it will be Memphis, San Antonio, LA Clippers, Houston, uh, Timberwolves. So yeah, so they should be on top of their division for the West. I think that they still have some problems with their coaching. I mean, it just seems like there's something missing there that's not, not connecting. It does seem to me that Cat is slowly, he's supposed to be the man out there, but it seems like he's getting overshadowed by, you know, Wiggins and Jimmy Buckets out there. So. I hope that they can kind of balance it out because I like all those young guys out there. They have a squad. And with, you know, the Golden State Warriors looking like humans because they lost the Memphis Grizzlies. And hell, even the Cavs lost to the Magic, which is crazy. Both of those teams lost on the same day. So that's going to be it for this episode of Top of the Key. I try to do these, you know, every other day if I get the chance to. I'm going to try to break it down to where, you know, every Wednesday it should be like, you know, the trade deadlines, you know, all the little rumors I hear. And maybe a couple like the little clutch games I've seen. Uh, Friday would be like a weekly wrap up of all the games. You know, who, you know, top performer of the week that, in my opinion, you know, who's defensive player of the week. I got that NBA League Pass. So I'm watching like all the games, you know. I'm supposed to be working, but you know how that goes. And then Monday would just be like a quick weekend recap, you know. Maybe some stuff you might have missed because like there's a lot of good football going on. So I'm like, nah, not only am I watching college football, I'm watching NFL football. It might be watching some boxing. It might be watching some, fun, some MMA. Shoot, I might even watch some of this, uh, this World Series and the Houston Astros and the Dodgers. Dodgers, from the time of this recording, the Dodgers went up one up on the uh, Houston Astros out in LA. You know, if you like what you're hearing, you know, go ahead and uh, give us a like, and hit subscribe, and uh, if you don't like what I'm doing, just like let me know in the comments, like, hey, what would you like to hear? Stuff I could do better, you know. Any, any criticism can help, man. Any suggestions, I'm gonna take them, you know, and use it. Because I've gotten a couple of good points for a couple guys, and this is really helping me out. So, also check out our other show, Turf Toe Show, every Thursday. That's where we break down, you know, college football, NFL football. Uh, Stephen Harris and uh, Glow Man are usually with me, and we just dive into it, man. It's usually me just roasting the Miami Dolphins. So, until next time, guys, take it easy.